there was how how Bruce Lee died. They said it was a couple. He upset it because of his success in the film industry and taking the martial arts around the world that he upset it, the triads. Minutes later, Dr. Eugene Chu arrives. He tries CPR, but can't revive him. On July 20th, 1973, a violent moment happened in martial arts history. Bruce Lee's sudden and tragic death at the young age of 32 sent shockwaves through the world. His passing left a void in the hearts of fans worldwide, sparking a hunger for answers. How did it happen? Jackie Chan, another martial artist, now shares his intuition into Bruce Lee's life and death. This revelation could reshape our understanding of Bruce Lee's final days, illuminating the various truths behind the legend. Before Jackie Chan became a tribe name, he was dazed by a fan paying attention to Bruce Lee's arousing presence on screen. Bruselli's martial arts skill and confidence inspired Jackie, leading him down a path he never imagined. Jackie's journey began behind the scenes as a stuntman, streaming up every piece of knowledge he could from seasoned professionals. Fate then led him to the sets of two of Bruce Lee's defining films, Fist of Fury and the legendary Enter the Dragon. Despite facing stiff competition in the industry, Jackie's dedication and perseverance ultimately paid off, propelling him towards his iconic status. In a 1997 interview, Jackie spoke with amazement about Bruce Lee's impact, not just as a martial artist, but as a sympathetic human being. Bruce's genuine treatment of stunt performers, respect, and care left a lasting impression on Jackie, shaping his approach to fame and talent in the film industry. Bruce Lee's unmatched talent and charm captivated audiences worldwide, forever changing the aspect of martial arts cinema. Despite his tragic end, Bruce's influence was immortalized in timeless classics like Enter the Dragon, fixing his status as a legend in cinema history. On the set of Enter the Dragon, the paths of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan intersect in a moment that is both memorable and unexpected. At the time, Jackie Chan was just a young stuntman, a far cry from the superstar, while Bruce Lee was already a global phenomenon. An accidental incident unfolds in a scene where Jackie is among a group facing Bruce Lee's character. A strike mistakenly lands across Jackie's face as Bruce Lee approaches Jackie with his nunchucks. Despite this mishap, Bruce Lee seamlessly carries on with the scene, displaying his symbol of professionalism. After the camera turned off, Bruce Lee, genuinely concerned, offered his apologies to Jackie Chan. Overwhelmed by the attention from his idol, Jackie playfully exaggerated the impact of the hit, enjoying the brief interaction with the star he praised so much. This minor incident sparked something unexpected. Impressed by Jackie's dedication and quick thinking, Bruce Lee started recognizing him around the set. What started as a simple apology evolved into engaging conversations, and Bruce even sought Jackie out for additional stunt work in the iconic film Enter the Dragon. This moment marked a crucial point for young Jackie Chan. Not only did it establish his position in the film industry, but it also reserved him the admiration and confidence of a martial arts icon. Reflecting on Bruce Lee's legacy, Jackie Chan acknowledges this encounter's profound impact on his career. After the tragic passing of Bruce Lee in 1973, a perceptible void emerged in the Hong Kong film industry. Bruce Lee's electrifying presence and unparalleled martial arts skills left a gaping hole many believed could never be filled. Filmmakers crawled to find the next big star, the next action hero who could captivate audiences like Bruce Lee had. Among those considered, a young Jackie Chan caught their eye. Jackie Chan possessed the talent and dedication honed through years of exhausting stunt work. However, he had different plans. Jackie contemplated laboriously the pressure to mimic Bruce Lee's fighting style. Filmmakers instructed him to copy Lee's movements and expressions, turning him into a mere imitation. However, Jackie knew no one could replace Bruce Lee, and Lee's style didn't fit him. He preferred grounded kicks and a different flow than Lee's signature high kicks. This internal conflict reached a turning point before filming Snake in the Eagle's Shadow. With conviction, Jackie approached the film producer, UnCEO, pleading for creative freedom. 
He argued that mimicking Bruce Lee wouldn't work. He needed to carve his path that showcased his unique skills and personality. Impressed by Jackie's passion and vision, the UN CEO agreed. Chan faced an uphill battle. He was cast in movies like New Fist of Fury and Shaolin Wooden Men. He was tasked with copying Bruce Lee's fighting style and attitude. However, these films could have resonated with audiences. As Chan confessed in his autobiography, these movies bombed the box office. Viewers weren't convinced by his attempts to mimic Lee's style. Everything changed with Snake in the Eagle's Shadow. This film marked a turning point for Jackie Chan, as he was finally given the creative freedom he desired. Jackie ditched the forced parroting and cuddled his unique style, blending kung fu with acrobatics and comedy. Jackie Chan once offered a thought-provoking perspective on Bruce Lee's tragic death, suggesting there was more to it than meets the eye. According to Jackie, during Bruce Lee's rise to fame in Hong Kong, the martial arts legend was surrounded by constant gossip and expectations. People constantly pushed Bruce Lee to live up to an almost mythical image. This pressure led to a constant burden of expectation, quietly on Bruce Lee's shoulders. Lee's punching power became legendary, with tales of his incredible force climbing from 100 to 700 pounds. Stories suggested he could shatter walls with just a single finger punch. Jackie Chan believed that the pressure to maintain a superhero persona ultimately took a toll on Bruce Lee. The controversy surrounding Bruce Lee's death on a summer morning in Hong Kong on July 20, 1973, remains a topic of debate to this day. Brimming with life and energy, Bruce Lee woke up ready to face the day. After a productive day of brainstorming sessions and creative discussions, Lee decided to catch up with a good friend, Betty Ting Pei. What started as a casual afternoon visit would take a turn that no one could have predicted. Tragically, as night fell, the man who captivated the world with his lightning-fast moves and profound perception lay lifeless on a mattress. This shocking turn of events followed a troubling incident months earlier. Lee had collapsed suddenly, prompting a visit to Hong Kong Baptist Hospital. There, doctors delivered a troubling diagnosis. Cerebral edema, or brain swelling, caused by fluid buildup exerting pressure on his brain. Despite his on-screen superhuman image and martial arts mastery, Lee never claimed to be too powerful. He openly acknowledged his limitations, highlighting his humanity below fantastic skills. The autopsy found no signs of foul play, no wounds or external harm. Instead, the cause of death was attributed to excessive fluid buildup in the skull, resulting in a significant 13% increase in pressure. Officially, Bruce Lee's death was attributed to a hypersensitivity reaction to Equates, a medication orchestrated by his friend Betty Ting Pei on the day of his passing. However, this explanation did not entirely quell the doubts and speculation surrounding his demise. The whispers and speculation that arose surrounding the circumstances of Bruce Lee's death painted a complex and emotionally charged picture. Some questioned the role of the medication, while more weird theories amused others. Fans, reeling from the shock of Lee's passing, desperately searched for answers behind the official explanation. Whispers of a connection between Lee and actress Betty Ting Pei quickly gained traction, as some narratives suggested that she had given Lee the aquagenic medication, leading to wild accusations of intentional poisoning. These claims were often linked to rumors of a romantic relationship between them. However, these allegations lacked hard evidence and painted a complex, emotionally charged picture. In Hong Kong, the rumors surrounding Bruce Lee's death took a sinister turn. Allegations surfaced of a hit placed on Betty Ting Pei's life, escalating tensions to a boiling point. The tension reached its peak in early August 1973, when an alarming bomb threat rattled the public square. A suspicious package adorned with Chinese writing was discovered, bearing a chilling message. Betty Ting knows the cause of Bruce Lee's death. Thankfully, upon inspection, the bomb turned out to be a hoax, containing nothing but refuse. However, the relief was short-lived as three more fake bombs were planted across the city in the following weeks, each accompanied by unsettling messages like, Revenge for Bruce Lee. The official inquiry into Bruce Lee's passing revealed that he died in 1973 from an allergic reaction to painkillers at the age of 32. 
His sudden death threw the British colonial government into a difficult position, demanding serious attention to calm the public and quell the rumors. However, the official inquiry hit a snag as experts couldn't agree on the exact cause of Lee's death. While the autopsy revealed swelling in the brain, the reason behind it remained a mystery. Initial suspicions of marijuana consumption were dismissed, leading to a new theory proposed by Dr. Donald Tier from London. Dr. Tier suggested that Bruce Lee might have had a severe allergic reaction to aspirin, causing a life-threatening reaction called anaphylactic shock. Despite lacking more substantial evidence, the government had no choice but to accept this explanation. However, the official explanation of an allergic reaction to aspirin didn't sit right with fans of Bruce Lee. After all, Lee had taken aspirin without issue for years, leaving surviving doubts and fueling continued talk about the actual cause of his untimely death. Further doubts arose due to the specific nature of the proposed allergy, anaphylaxis, this severe allergic reaction typically comes with a meaningful set of symptoms, including throat swelling, difficulty breathing, red and itchy skin, and inflammation around the mouth. However, these warning signs were utterly absent in Bruce Lee's case, casting further doubt on the aspirin theory. As doubts about the official explanation swirled, one theory pointed at Betty Ting Pei not as a sole actor, but as a potential pawn in a giant game. Speculation arose that powerful triad gangs could have hired her to eliminate Bruce Lee. This claim is considered a viewpoint due to past incidents linking Lee with the triads. Lee had arguments with triads in the past, including a conflict during his younger years with the son of a local gang leader. Rumors circulated that Lee refused to pay protection money to triads on his film sets, painting a target on his back. Another theory pointed towards mainland Chinese gangs as possible culprits. This theory suggests that Lee's rising fame threatened the dominance of Mandarin-language cinema. Over their financial stakes in Mandarin films, these gangs might have seen Lee's elimination as a way to protect their interests. A curious yet unproven theory involves a potential conflict with traditional kung fu masters. Speculation centers on Lee's decision to teach martial arts to international students, particularly Americans. Some suggest that Lee's departure from traditional teachings could have led to revenge, including attacks using the mythical Dim Mac technique. American martial artist Chuck Norris had to publicly deny rumors that Lee had taught him Kung Fu, highlighting the universality of such discussions at the time. Lee's decision to train foreigners sparked debate in Hong Kong, fueling predictions that the Kung Fu masters were targeting him. These theories remain unproven, leaving Bruce Lee's death covered in puzzle and continuing debate among fans and scholars alike. In 1964, Bruce Lee was in a heated confrontation with Wong Jackman in Oakland's Chinatown. Wong, a skilled martial artist trained by Ma Kin Fung, challenged Lee due to tensions in the Chinese community over Lee's teaching of martial arts to non-Chinese students. According to Lee, the conflict arose when he boasted about his abilities during a performance in San Francisco's Chinatown Theater, leading Wong to challenge him. During the encounter, Wong claims Lee initiated an attack aimed at his eyes, prompting Wong to defend himself with hidden cufflinks. However, Lee and some witnesses argue that the fight lasted only three minutes and ended with Lee's apparent victory. Adding to the confusion, Michael Dorgan's book Bruce Lee's Toughest Fight suggests that Lee tired himself out rather than delivering a decisive blow. Rumors of a family curse in the Lee lineage emerged among conflicting stories linked to the showdown with Wong Jackman. This belief stemmed from an incident involving Bruce Lee's father, Lee Hoi Chuen, who reportedly offended a Chinese opera performer, leading to a generational curse. Regardless of how the Oakland Chinatown fight is seen, its impact on Bruce Lee's life and legacy is undeniable. It was a pivotal moment that tested Lee's skills, determination, and combat philosophy. The fight's outcome sparked discussions on combat effectiveness, the relevance of traditional martial arts in modern combat, and the importance of adaptability and innovation. Decades later, discussions about the fight's details and implications continue among martial arts enthusiasts and scholars, offering insights into Lee's character, approach, and challenges. Despite the years that have passed, the events of that day in Oakland's Chinatown remain shrouded in mystery and open to interpretation. 
Bruce Lee's lasting influence ensures that debates surrounding this significant event will persist for generations. Suppositions surrounding Bruce Lee's untimely demise, one theory, the notion of a family curse, stands out. This theory revolves around a tragic event preceding Bruce's birth, the loss of his parent's son. It's believed that this sorrowful incident was part of a curse afflicting the male members of the family. Some say Bruce's parents named him Little Phoenix, typically given to girls to ward off evil spirits. This decision, influenced by superstition, was made by Bruce's mother, known for her superstitious beliefs. She hoped that presenting her son as a daughter would shield him from the perceived threat of the curse. Considering the premature death of Bruce Lee's son, Brandon, the family curse theory takes a dramatic turn. Like his father, Brandon tragically passed away at the young age of 28. Brandon's demise occurred on a movie set, mirroring a scene from his father's movie, Game of Death. Both deaths involved gunshot wounds, further intensifying the unsettling parallels. Advocates of the curse theory recognize these tragic events as interconnected, suggesting they were not merely accidents but manifestations of a generational curse targeting the male successors of the Lee family. Despite the captivating narrative of the Lee family curse theory, it's crucial to acknowledge certain factors that raise doubts about its validity. Firstly, the theory overlooks the existence of Bruce's older brother, Peter, who lived a long and healthy life, passing away at 69. Additionally, Bruce's younger brother, Robert, a renowned musician, is alive and well. This inconsistency in the claimed curse's impact on the family members supports its credibility. Linda Lee, Bruce's wife, has actively refuted various theories and rumors over the years. She firmly denies allegations of Bruce's heavy marijuana use and stands by the official cause of his death, which was cerebral edema. Within the talk of family curses and shady connections, another name has cropped up in the mystery surrounding Bruce Lee's death, Raymond Chow. Lee and Chow were tight buddies who launched Concord Production Incorporation together, the company behind Lee's legendary films. But now, whispers suggest Chow might have had a hand in Lee's demise, stirring up doubts about their bond and its effect on Lee's career. Gossip about their rocky relationship and Chow's possible motives after Lee's passing keep the rumor mill spinning, leaving fans and onlookers intrigued and hungry for answers. Ironically, one of Bruce Lee's most famous sayings, Be water, my friend, represents flexibility and adaptation. But a recent idea suggests that water might have been a factor in his tragic death. In December 2022, the Clinical Kidney Journal explored different theories about how Lee died. They suggested hyponatremia, a condition where low sodium levels disrupt the body's balance, as a potential cause of his fatal brain swelling. Researchers from Spain's Autonomous University think Lee might have accidentally drunk too much water, which diluted his sodium levels and threw his body off balance. Surprisingly, they found that the amount of water Lee reportedly drank wouldn't usually cause this in someone with everyday habits. However, they discovered clues indicating that Lee was more vulnerable because of confident lifestyle choices. His increased alcohol and juice consumption led to what the study calls chronic fluid intake. Also, marijuana use and certain medications he might have taken could have affected his kidney's ability to remove excess fluids, raising his risk. Interestingly, Lee's symptoms before he died matched those seen in cases of fatal hyponatremia, mistaken for heat stroke. Adding to the mystery of Bruce Lee's death, biographer Matthew Pauley suggested the heat stroke theory in his book Bruce Lee, a life. This idea gained momentum because, in the two months before his death, Lee had lost a significant 15% of his body weight due to intense work, leaving him at only 54 kilograms. This weakened state made his body less able to cope. To avoid visible sweat stains on camera, Lee had surgery to remove some sweat glands from his armpits a few months before he died. Ironically, this choice compromised his body's natural ability to regulate temperature. On May 10, 1973, tragedy struck as Bruce Lee collapsed while working on the dubbing for Enter the Dragon. The recording studio's air conditioning was turned off to prevent noise interference, creating an oppressive environment that exacerbated Lee's fragile health. His symptoms, high fever, weakness, 
vomiting and loss of consciousness, aligned with those of heat stroke, indicating the dire conditions he faced. Biographer Matthew Pauley suggests that a similar overheating scenario could have triggered his final collapse, leading to his untimely death. On the day he passed away, Lee complained of a headache, which Pauley suggests might have been an early warning sign of heat stroke. Despite the many theories surrounding his death, Bruce Lee's legacy as a martial arts icon, philosopher, and cultural symbol remains unshakable. His influence on cinema, martial arts, and Eastern philosophy inspires people worldwide. Even fellow martial arts legend Jackie Chan dismisses conspiracy theories, believing Lee died of natural causes. Chan's perspective underscores a desire for a straightforward explanation, free from speculation and drama. Ultimately, while the exact cause of Bruce Lee's death may forever remain a mystery, his impact on the world surpasses the uncertainties surrounding his final moments. His commitment to his craft, pursuit of excellence, and message of self-belief continue to resonate with millions, cementing his status as a true legend. Thank you for watching. Until next time.